All right, so today we're taking a slight detour from our Internet of Things projects because my car needs some work. My stereo that I've had for a very long time, my car is 20 years old this year. It's my favorite. Um, I bought, I worked an entire summer back when I was a teenager to buy a Kenwood stereo to install in this car. And so it is just barely younger at 19 and a half years old. Uh, and it's acting up on me. The volume all of a sudden will either turn all the way down to zero or it will crank all the way up full blast, uh, hurting my ears. And so <clears throat> we are going to pull it out of the dash. I think I know what's wrong with it um, because I have actually taken it apart before, but I think it applies in the general theme of electronics because once you have the knowledge and you're messing around with these things, you're not as scared to take things apart, which I think is a big deal uh, because there's lots of things. This radio back in the 90s cost me over $500 and it has lasted almost 20 years because I've been able to fix it uh, just for my knowledge of electronics. And so um, I think it's a good thing. I think it's semi-relevant. And so let's take it apart. I just remembered there's a cable that connects all of these controls way down underneath by the pedals they gotta reach down under and disconnect. So let's do that. I can't remember how to get it off. Dang it. I got it. Oh man. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm like dripping sweat now but we got it out. All right, so what we have here is the unit. It has all of the climate controls. That's how it works in my car. Torn out. Now we're gonna take it down into the office, put it on the bench, start taking it apart. So what's cool about this unit, but also the problem, is that when the car starts, the faceplate flips around. The problem is, is there's a ribbon cable that attaches the head unit to the rest of the amplifier that after hundreds and hundreds of times of that, it starts to get worn out. We might have a different problem than I thought. I thought the cable was bad down here. But when I'm looking at these buttons, listen to the up button. It's got a nice tactile feel to it and a click. The volume down, however, nothing. And then this button right below the volume down, you can't hear it, but it also has a nice tactile feel. This down volume button doesn't seem to work. We might have a bad button, which is gonna be harder to fix. All right, so I ran out of time for today. We gotta wrap this episode up. But one thing that I wanted to point out was taking apart this old Kenwood stereo has reminded me how amazing of a job the engineers did that designed this. Everything is very modular. It, it's almost as if it was made to be taken apart and worked on. Not something that we see a lot of nowadays, unfortunately. Uh, everything's glued shut and it's hard to get open. You need special tools, but just with regular screwdrivers, I was able to open up, take all of the pieces out in modular form, set them aside, and get down to finally the faceplate, which I thought the issue was this cable. After thousands of open and close um, cycles, I, this cable gets worn out. I had to replace it once before about seven years ago. It seems to be just fine. The problem seems to be in my display. 
Um, the down volume button does not work. It gets stuck. I confirm that with the meter. Um, if I hold the meter on it for continuity and press the button, it'll, it'll show that the connection has been made. But then when I release it, sometimes it won't release. And that's why my volume turns all the way down. I'm not sure why the volume just today started turning all the way up because the, the up volume button seems to be working fine. But when I first opened it up, it felt like it was stuck. And I think I've just jarred it loose. And so I think it's good to go now. The problem with these buttons is they're very small tactile switches, which I would just try to replace, but they also have little teeny LEDs built in so that the, they can shine through this faceplate here um, to give the display a nice lit up look. Um, and so I doubt that I would find, I spent a little bit of time on DigiKey looking for uh, push button switches that have LEDs built in to see if I might just off chance find one of these. I mean, this part is at least 20 years old, so I would be very surprised if they still had them. However, fingers crossed and last ditch effort, something that you can try, which I have tried and I'll report back on, is I just tweeted to Kenwood and said, hey, I've been loving this, this has been my favorite stereo ever been using it for 20 years um is there any chance that you could look up an old part number on a unit that you know is completely discontinued so it's not like it's protected intellectual property but maybe they'll consider it such but anyway i'm trying i'll report back tomorrow to see if they get back to me um like i said even if they did give me the part number i doubt i can still find one online to purchase um so i think the the up volume is fine now and so i don't think it should turn all the way up anymore the, the down still gets stuck and turns all the way down. I've been dealing with that for years. I think it's a bad button, but that one's not as bad. You just turn it back up when it turns all the way down. So if I fix the up volume sticking and I still have to deal with the down, that might be okay. I'll put the whole unit back together after I hear or don't hear from Kenwood and we will move on. I appreciate everybody watching as usual. Daily IoT, the show where together we're learning how to make and sometimes fix the internet of things one day at a time.